In the spring of 1996, I took a group of college students to Athens, Greece. I was a college instructor at the time on the faculty of Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. I was in the Department of Speech Communication, and I taught mostly public speaking classes, and I was the coach of Miami's speech team. I had done speech competition in college, and now I was the coach of this team of uh, extraordinarily talented college students. And we did pretty well in competition. We'd won the state championship a few times. Uh, we were probably the fifth best team in the country. Uh, but there was a speech competition uh, in Athens, Greece. It was an international speech competition, and we decided uh, to attend this event. And so the students helped raise money, and they qualified to go to Athens, Greece for a week of competition. Uh, excitingly, we found out that our team actually won this championship. We were the world champions. Uh, now, the other four really good teams in the country didn't attend that event in Athens, Greece, and so we were world champions with an asterisk. We were the best of all the teams that went to that tournament. But we had two days worth of great competition. Uh, the kids got their trophies. Everybody was excited. And then we still had five days left uh, to explore Athens, Greece. And we had some amazing adventures, uh, including a uh, late night crazy trip to the Parthenon that I'll tell you about maybe in another video. Uh, but I'm going to tell you the story this time about uh, how we inadvertently found ourselves in a Greek prison. <laughs> so there's lots of choices of activities you can do when you're touring uh, in a foreign country like that. One of the things we decided to do was to visit one of the Greek islands. Everyone's heard of the Greek Isles. Like, wow, we got to check that out, the Greek Islands. Well, which one are you going to go to? Uh, we found out that they had these boats, like hydrofoils, that would go to the different Greek Islands. And the further you went, the more it cost. And so we were on a tight budget. So uh, we decided to visit an island called Aegina, which is pretty close. I think it cost us like $10 a person uh, to get on this boat and go visit this island. We didn't really know what was there. Our plan was just to walk around. So we got up in the morning, uh, we left uh, early from the hotel. We didn't tell anyone where we were going. We just uh, were heading out. And uh, we got on this boat, went off to this island. And as we were disembarking, there was this old man with his bushy mustache. Uh, and he was sitting there with a cane and he was just saying hello to everyone who got off this boat in different languages. He was like, buongiorno, hello. And, and uh, we said, hi. And uh, he said, oh, American." And we said, yeah, yeah, we're from America. <laughs> and uh, welcome, welcome to my island. You know, and off off we go. We're walking around seeing the island and uh, uh, stopped at a couple cool places, saw some sights, took some pictures. Uh, and then as the day was going on, it was getting uh, close. We had about maybe an hour, hour and a half till we had to meet back at the boat to head back over to the mainland. Uh, this uh, moped comes up. Nee, 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 nee. It's that old dude. And uh, we're like, hey, it's the only person we know on this whole island. And uh, he pulls up and uh, gets off and he goes, hey, my American friends. Would you guys like to see something amazing? Well, sure. Who doesn't want to see something amazing? And he goes, do you like animals? <laughs> well, everybody likes animals, sir. And he goes, do you like exotic animals? <laughs> I said, well, like what? He goes, would you like to see some wolves and some eagles and some foxes and wild pelicans? <laughs> uh, yeah. Who doesn't want to see wolves and foxes? And uh, I said, sure. Where are they? And he goes, they're right here. And we were walking right by this old, old building. You know, old. You know, in, in the U.S. here, when we say a building's old, we mean it's like, you know, 100 years old. It's historic. Uh, what we learned about Europe is when they say something's old, uh, this building was old when Jesus lived, okay? There's some really, really old stone buildings. And we were right next to one. And uh, he goes, it's in here. And uh, I go, okay. And he pulls this key out and goes to this janky looking sketchy door. And like, <laughs> and I go, uh, what is this place? And he says, come inside and find out. <laughs> I said, 
uh, it looks kind of like a prison. And he said, yes, it once was. <laughs> so this is mysterious and weird and creepy, but kind of cool, right? So uh, I asked, you know, I'm, I'm like the adult there. I think there was uh, one graduate student who was also adult and then these college students. And um, I'm like, you guys, you want to go in? And uh, a couple of them, uh, you know, my friend Julia, who was there, was like, I don't know if this is a good idea. I'm like, oh, what's the worst that could happen? And uh, yeah, let's go, let's go in. So we walk in this, into this prison, and the guy, like, <laughs> locks the, closes and locks the door behind us. And we're in this hallway. It's kind of this open air hallway. You can see the sky. Uh, but there's like wires hanging, extension cords, bare light bulbs. And we just start walking down this corridor. And I'm like, where are we? And uh, we uh, we hear these dogs barking. Whoa. And so we, we go down and there's this, we turn this corner. And there's this huge outdoor uh, cell, like a cage. And in there is like a hundred dogs barking at us dogs of every I'm like oh my gosh it's a lot of dogs and uh he's like come on come and we get to another area with uh just iron door like bars like a gate bars on the door and gets his key out unlocks it come inside and it's at that moment that I start having my doubts about where we are and what we've got ourselves into. Uh, and it occurs to me that no one in the world knows that we're here, right? Like our families back home in America know that we're in Athens, Greece. That's all they know. No one knows we're on this island. Uh, certainly no one knows that we're in this old prison. And uh, I started getting a little anxious. Like uh, maybe this was a bad decision. And I go... Um, just, you know, before we go through the gate with the bars and the big lock, I just, what is this place? And he said that, I'm going to quit doing his accent. <laughs> but he said, uh, he said it was an animal sanctuary. And, uh, and I said, okay, what do you mean? He said, uh, uh, this is the place where anytime an animal anywhere in Greece gets shot or poisoned or sick or injured, this is where they bring it. And we keep all the animals here. And so these are all dogs that are um, have been abandoned and we're trying to nurse them back to health. And through this gate are the most amazing animals you'd ever see. And I said, so we're just gonna go in here and you're gonna give us a tour. And he said, uh, uh, we only charge a few drachma which was at the time the currency in Greece. And I'm like, uh oh, here's where we get blackmailed, right? Here's where he wants $10,000 each before we can get out of here. This is gonna be on the news. We're gonna be on CNN. Uh, American college students held captive with their stupid college instructor who got him into this mess. And I'm like, uh, we don't have a lot of money, sir. And he's like, no, just a few, just a few drop. He wanted like $5 from each person to get a tour of this place. And I'm like, well, we can swing that. So we go through the gate and uh, we walk up to this door and there's this like white iron metal door and this with little bars in it and you can see blood, you know, kind of on there. And it was, I'm like, I was still very, very nervous. And I go up and I look inside and it's like, it's a room, uh, clearly it used to be a prison cell. And in this room is about 30 wolves just wolves that are looking back at me through this opening in the door. And uh, I'm like, uh, that's a room full of wolves. <laughs> He's like, I know. <laughs> and so we go down to the next one and he slides back this thing and we look inside. And in this room is about 75 foxes. Like red foxes are all running around in this room and they all kind of look out. And we go down to the next one, we open it up and there were some big branches that had been put in there. And on these branches was about 30 eagles. They had a room full of eagles. <laughs> and then in the, the main courtyard, they had just all these pelicans. They like had like a collection of pelicans. And as we started going from room to room, it was the most bizarre, most exotic 
uh, zoo kind of setup. Like this is really so amazing. And I'm like, this place is, is, is really cool. It's cool. What's the story with this place? He said, well, we started this animal sanctuary and it's grown and it's grown and we have these animals and it's, it's very expensive to take care of them. Uh, it costs uh, hundreds of thousands of drachma a week just to feed the wolves and the dogs and let alone, uh, you know, the vultures and uh, the, the falcons and uh, it, it's all these different breeds of animals. And uh, he said, yeah, we probably won't be able to keep this going for very long because uh, we don't have enough money to support this animal sanctuary. Uh, that most of these animals can't be released back into the wild. And we're probably going to have to um, euthanize most of these animals because we can't afford, you know, to stay in business. And uh, we were like, oh, my gosh. I said, well, how can we help? Is there a way that we can help? He goes, well, what we really need is to get the word out. We need to spread the word to other parts of the world, preferably the United States. He said, people in America care about animals more than people in Greece do. And if the people in America just knew about the plight of these animals, if we could find a way to communicate the message to them, that could fix everything. And I said, sir, do you have any idea who we are? We're the world championship speech team. If anyone is going to be good at getting the message out about what's going on here, we could do that. He's like, really? I'm like, yes, we'll go back to America and we'll spread the word. And so uh, we left there. And we all were like, that was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I've, I've traveled. I've traveled a lot. It's probably the coolest thing I've ever seen in all my travels. And uh, so sure enough, we get home and uh, we started spreading the word. And uh, we got a hold of some wildlife organizations in America and uh, we helped. Uh, we don't get all the credit for it. Who knows what else was going on behind the scenes. But we tried to do our best uh, to get the word out about this animal sanctuary. And you know what? It worked out amazing. So the name of this place, what they called it, was the Hellenic Wildlife Hospital. And uh, this building that it was in used to be a prison. Before that, it was originally built uh, to be an orphanage, like hundreds of years ago. This is like the oldest building on the island. And uh, they just needed to find a place with some more space. So we helped them get connected with the International Wildlife Rehabilitation Council that's based in California. And along with some other organizations, and they got some more funding, and they got some momentum. Uh, a few years later, I think in 2001, they moved out of uh, this old prison, and they now have uh, a beautiful property farther inland uh, on the island, farther away from the ocean, which I think maybe that's good for the animals. And... Uh, uh, it's a beautiful property on a hill, and they have plenty of room. And uh, to this day, they still have uh, pelicans and storks uh, and imperial and golden eagles, uh, flamingos, vultures, red foxes, wolves, bears. And the, it's still operating. It's still uh, helping animals. Uh, currently 4,000 injured and sick animals a year get brought here, get nursed back to health, get either adopted or uh, released back in the wild whenever they can. It's an amazing uh, charity. And we got to experience it just because of some weird old dude on a moped and that we were nice to him. And uh, it really, really, the whole thing was an amazing experience. But here's the moral of the story, right? I like, if I'm going to tell a story, it's an interesting story, but there's got to be a point, right? Here's the point of the story. Uh, what we got to see was not in any of the brochures, uh, the tourist brochures about Athens, Greece. We were clearly off the beaten path. And it's been my experience in my life that the very best experiences, the coolest things I've ever seen and done, um, were not the famous tourist sites, right? Like... Uh, uh, I've been to Times Square in New York, which is uh, crowded and noisy and weird. And uh, eh, I could take it or leave it, not a big fan. Uh, but the tourist locations to me are always kind of underwhelming. But if you're willing to go off the beaten path, if you're willing to get out of your comfort zone a little bit, uh, try something new, be on the lookout for new and different cool and amazing things. You can have some amazing experiences and you can experience things that no one else is going to ever see and no one else is going to get a chance to do. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, that's part of having an epic life is just always being on the lookout for what can we do that's fun, that's amazing, and hopefully 
stumble across some way to make a difference. And that day I felt like we made a little bit of a difference for those uh, amazing people who work at that shelter and for all those animals. It's an experience I'm really thankful for.